Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Wayne's World of Science and Technology. Um, one tiny bit of channel admin. I've hired a brand new executive producer, and I would like you to introduce you to Loki, the dog of mischief. And yeah, he's going to help me. He'll keep me <laughs> busy cleaning up messes. Well, you know what it's like. Babies of all species leave messes. But he's a wonderful little guy. Anyway, today I want to talk about the sinking of the Slavikrass class cruiser Moskva. There's a bunch of things that people have just missed, and it's really annoying me. Okay, first off, everybody's treating the Ukrainians like they're so dumb they can't pour piss out of a boot, as my dad used to say. Why could not the Ukrainians have found the Moskva on their own? Why did they need outside help? Simple, because everybody assumes the Ukrainians can't do anything. Well, guess what? It's quite possible that they knew exactly where the ship was. Open source intelligence has been providing us with a track of where the ship has been. Why couldn't Ukraine have used that same open source intelligence? Easy, they could have. Another point is that everybody talks about the three Slavic class cruisers in the Russian Navy. What they ignore is there was actually a fourth ship built. That fourth ship is still sitting in the shipyard, 99% complete. Guess where the shipyard is? Yeah, you're wondering why the Russians have been pushing toward Mikolaev? Because there's a Slavic class cruiser sitting in Mikolaev, damn near complete. It just needs a little bit of work, and it's magazines filled, and it would be functional. Even better, if you capture Mick alive, you capture the shipyard that built all of the Slava class cruisers, and you have a capable, capable shipyard. Okay, so how did the Ukrainians find this, the uh, Moscow? Well, there are several possibilities. One is that the ship could have been running its transponder. I don't know whether it was or not. It may or may not have been. Uh, but whether or not it was running its transponder may not have mattered because there are other things to consider. There's this thing that ships have called in identify friend foe. And IFF is a great thing. However, Ukraine built Moskva. They know the original systems that were installed. Everything we've seen from the uh, Russian since the start of uh, this war has been basically upgraded Soviet equipment. And, well, if it's upgraded Soviet equipment, Soviet equipment is what Ukraine knows really well because, hell, they build it. So it's quite possible that the Ukrainians were able to trip the IFF on the Moskva, whether Russia wanted them to be able to or not, and that would have provided a targeting beacon. Another possibility, and this is the one that I personally think is the most likely, is that the Moskva was sitting there saying, Hi, see me, because it was there specifically for one, one reason. When you look at the ship, the ship is, um, how should I put it, not all that useful for land operations. It was designed to kill carriers, and it has a great big number of huge missiles that are designed to take carriers in, which is fine for ship-to-ship -ship warfare. It's not so much uh, for ship-to-land. Uh, the main gun is uh, anemic, to put it best, uh, and uh, there are no uh, missiles that are on the ship that are designed for use on land attack. Everything else that's sitting there was designed for air defense. Russian TV has specifically said that the ship was there in an air defense role. For you to be useful in air defense, you have to be running your radar. If you're running your radar, everybody can see you. Just think about that. You get this nice, bright beacon. So, yeah, the Ukrainians could probably see the ship bright as day. They have a lot of sensor equipment, and they've been using it quite well in this uh, conflict, as you may have noticed. So why couldn't they just turn around and say, oh, look at this. We've got this radar beacon. Great. We can use that to uh, program in the coordinates for a missile. 
there's another point that people are missing that just makes me laugh. Everybody says, well, the MOSFET should have been able to tell when it was being painted by the radar from the missile. Why? Why did the missile need to paint the mosque with its radar? All it had to do was home on the mosque's own radar. And as long as it does that up until the point where, uh, how should I put it, Moscow turns off its radar and in, then turns its own on, uh, that would work. Or if Moscow didn't turn off its radar, well, it just kept on homing in on the radar signal. That would be quite feasible to do because, you know, uh, the sensor on the thing is built to home in on a radar signal, whether it's homing in on its own or honing in on the uh, radar signal of the ship. Okay, you can get down, little guy. It is obviously going to be slightly different from a um, technical perspective, but it's not that different. And, oh, sorry, I want to make sure I don't forget anything. One final thing is that um, everybody's talking about a TB2 drone maybe uh, distracting the Moskva. This thing was designed for air defense. There's no way that a single drone would have distracted it. I have no idea what happened inside the ship that they didn't see the incoming missiles. And no, I do not believe the Russian Federation's claim that it was a careless smoking accident. I really do not. But you look at it, and that ship should not have gone down. The Royal Canadian Navy has frigates that are about half the size of the Moskva. Two hits from that size of missile would not knock one of those ships out. It just would not. So why did the Moskva go down? Probably there were some design issues. And there were also issues with the fact that if you look at the records, this ship has not been properly upgraded. I'll give you an example. The Royal Canadian Navy a while back uh, decided to um, retire its four destroyers. We had four destroyers and 12 frigates. Retiring the destroyers was an issue. The destroyers were designed for air defense. The frigates had no air defense. How did we get around it? Easy. We cut all 12 frigates in half welded a great big whopping new section in the middle full of air defense. And that's what we did. We did it to all 12 ships, our entire Navy of surface combatants. And we retired the four older uh, destroyers, which were no longer needed because the frigates had better air defense than the destroyers had. Canada does this sort of thing. We are, in a lot of ways, an extremely rich country. When we re replace our fighter aircraft, we replace the entire fleet at once. When we replace our tanks, we replace the entire fleet at once. When we replace our ships, we replace an entire class at the same time. And, well, in this case, we've introduced an additional class. Um, sorry, there's new stuff going on in the RCM, which is not really um, necessary to talk about here. The point is that Canada keeps on upgrading things regularly. We've even decided to upgrade the radars on our existing frigates, even though they're retiring in less than 10 years, because we are keeping them current. Russia doesn't appear to do this. They don't appear to have the money. And I'm going to address that in a separate video, but I seriously think that the Russian Federation military is so severely underfunded that um, I'm surprised it can function at all. Anyways, um, that's it for today. As I said, I wanted to cover the sinking of the Moskva. There are so many possible explanations that do not require outside assistance from the Ukrainians to have done this, that do not require all sorts of well, technical, crazy stuff. You know, just simple things they could have done. And those simple things would have got the missiles there. As for the ship sinking, I'm pretty sure it comes down to the design of the ship, the fact it wasn't modernized properly, and it could also come down to training. I mean, on that, I have no idea. Uh, you know, I just you know, know that the ship was not modernized the way that Canada modernizes ships, and 
when you've got a ship that is that old that hasn't been modernized, putting it in combat against an enemy that is current generation technology is not a good idea. Anyways, everybody stay safe, and we will be back soon. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.